So uh, welcome everybody to Match Chats. We've got uh, myself and we've got uh, the wonderful Gia and Jenna um, from the US, um, who I have met a couple of times at our camps uh, that we've done in North America, although it's been a few years since we met in person. Um, Gia and Jenna are, if you didn't see, the sisters, and they today we're talking about being at risk as siblings. Um, so Jenna, Gia, or, or whoever wants to introduce yourselves first, <laughs> maybe you can do rock, paper, scissors. Go for it, Gia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hi, my name is Gia. Um, I'm currently 26 years old. Um, I live in New York and um, I am a social worker. Um, our mom had HD and so did our grandpa and I will let Jenna introduce herself. Hi, I'm Jenna. I am originally from Long Island, New York, same place as Gia. Um, I currently live in Florida now, somewhere near Tampa. Um, we moved here about seven years ago for our mom's health. Um, I am a hairstylist in Tampa, Florida. And yeah, Gia. <laughs> I need a hairstylist. <laughs> Good to have do. one up. Yeah, um, to have one handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, so what is your family situation with HD? So um, I'm at risk. Gia is also at risk as well. You know, our mom was diagnosed with Huntington's disease um, in her early 30s. Um, like Jenna said, she was probably around five. I was um, around 10 when um, we were made aware of the situation. Um, our parents both wanted um, us to be aware of what was going on. Um, no secrets, everything out in the open so that we would be prepared for what was to come. Um, and unfortunately, our mom passed away in 2016 from the disease, um, and she, at this point, has been gone for five years now. Um, and like Jenna said, uh, I'm at risk also, and kind of in the same boat. I have been in the boat of not really wanting to be tested for about five years now. So after my mom passed or our mom passed, um, I kind of had HD take a back seat and live my life for me instead of living my life for HD. So that's currently why I have chosen to still be at risk. Do you guys remember kind of when you, what kind of age you were when you kind of understood that you were at risk? Yeah, I would say it was it was all at once. Nothing was a secret. So the at risk part was not a secret either. I remember um, when we were told about everything. This is when like computers were new and cool. So I like hopped on. And of course, the information out there at that point in time was not the greatest and also inaccurate. So I had also learned about my, myself being at risk through the Internet like Wikipedia basically. Yeah, I think that was the same thing for me. I think technology started becoming like such a big thing as we were younger. So I would go on my sister's laptop cause I didn't have one. So I would steal her laptop and kind of just, I never knew, I didn't even know how to spell Huntington's disease at that the age that I was. So I kind of just winged it and I would see stuff and I'd be like, oh my God. But I guess the age that I started really comprehending it was probably like sometime in middle school because that's when we started going to our mom's like um, doctor's appointment in Columbia University in New York City and they would just like evaluate her and it was like a Huntington's disease center of excellence I'm pretty sure so they would just always evaluate her give us like the next steps on what we had to do and then I think we had a social worker um, and we would always go to her when my mom had her appointments and she would always just ask like any family problems in the house and kind of like try to touch on us being at risk and stuff like that. So I'm guessing for me, it's probably like around like middle school, I want to say like fifth to sixth grade when I started like understanding what being at risk was. Mm -hmm. So when did you guys, do you, 
I don't want to say guys. <laughs> Talking to two girls, and still say guys. When did you? Two, when did you two girls um, kind of? Did you talk about your your being at risk together? And did you talk about that when you were growing up? Do you remember having conversations like that together? I mean, I feel like when we would go to our social worker um, at the Columbia University in New York City, it was kind of. I mean, I feel like I was shut off as a young child because I was clueless as to what was going on I wasn't clueless I was just like oh my god like when someone tells you oh you're at risk for a genetic disease you're like what the heck I'm just like what does genetic mean but um I think as I we've gotten older um I don't think it ever like goes unnoticed there's probably never been a day where it's been like a secret like if I choke on something and I'm like oh my god I have it I tell her or like uh, or I trip or and like my finger twitches I'm like oh my god it's it's happening and I feel like having someone who is obviously a family member and going through the same thing as you it's a little bit easier Hmm. Um, but I guess that's like a little bit of how I feel when I was younger I was like what the heck but now that's that's we try to not talk about it as much as we used to but we still talk about it because Gia is very involved in the HD community. I was very involved. I'm trying to get myself back into it. So um, I still try to like keep our prior, I guess priorities or the way we feel like at the top. Gia, anything to add? I would say she's definitely right. We growing up, I think we're just trying to both independently figure out what this meant for us but um and Jenna correct me if I'm wrong I don't necessarily think our top priority was us I don't think we were thinking about ourselves um top priority priority was mom and what is this going to mean for us as children of someone with HD I would say as I entered the later years of middle school, so maybe like seventh, eighth grade and beginning of high school, I became way more serious about myself being at risk. And I think that's when I talked about it more. Um, I definitely made it known to my family. Um, As soon as I turn 18, I'm getting tested. I'm sick of being at risk. So it's gonna happen. Um, So I definitely made it known, like, I would say I started talking about myself and HD around age 16 uh, because I I knew okay 18's coming up soon and I'll be able to do what I want and get this test if that's what my heart desires at this point in time Um, but then I kind of put it in the back of my head I didn't get tested at 18 obviously Um, and like Jenna said we definitely talk about it uh more as we grew up and entered these different like young adult phases of our lives where it impacts different things Mm. than when you're a child so yeah and so Jenna kind of touched a little bit there when she was saying uh, that she feels having a sibling who is also at risk it makes it a little bit easier which I thought was quite interesting because I always feel like uh, coming from uh, somebody who doesn't who doesn't have a sibling, um, that that's harder to have a sibling at risk because if you know you can't you're kind of worrying about more people oh, rather yeah. than just yourself. Um, but um, how would you say that kind of being at risk has impacted your relationship as, as sisters? Um, it's been tough because there's definitely days where I'm like like, oh my God, what happens if I get tested and I'm negative? And then what happens if Gia gets tested and she's positive or vice versa? And for me, a big part of, like I said, it's nice to have someone that's going through the same thing, but in long-term ways of thinking as it and thinking about it in ways of getting tested. For me, I have like a guilt part on getting tested because I'm like okay what happens I if I were to test positive or test negative and the same thing happens to her she tests positive or she tests negative and let's say 
one's positive, one ne- one's negative. Like that's such a hard thing to go through because we've been going through the same thing together our mm-hmm. whole life as being as re- at risk together. So that's like um right. I say it's easy now because we're both at risk, but I think like if either one of us started to do the testing session, it would be really difficult because you know, it's 50, 50, there's no in between on one person could have it more than the other, or one person could have it less. So I feel like that's why I don't get too worried because we're kind of on the same mindset of getting tested and the way we are right now, we kind of just want to live our life, do what we have to do and like work and be happy. Um, So in that way, I'm saying it's easy now, but I think if someone were to go get the testing done, I'd be like, oh man, where Uh do we start? (laughs) Yeah. And also I could say though, to our sister relationship, I think, I mean, I feel like with any, anything that's tragic, like Huntington's disease, Huntington's disease, illness in any way, death in any way, it's either going to bring families together or sometimes, unfortunately, it tears them apart. And I think in ways it has done both to our family as a whole. But the one thing that's always stayed consistent is how close me and Jenna have always been. Like there might be days where we're just like closed off to each other and we know that, okay, something's going on here or like she's having a bad day or a bad week or month even. Um, so we just like get each other and that's why I think and I agree it's easy to have a sister um that's going through the same thing because we could just turn to one another and be like did you drop something today me too and like make a joke out of it laugh together and know like all right we're not going crazy and like this is normal for us and kind of level and balance each other out So I think it's definitely um, made us stronger and closer, but we've always been close. Yeah. Um, And I think also when our mom passed, it made us stronger and closer too. Because again, like I said, we kind of, the focus totally was off of being a caregiver. We're not caregivers anymore. So it had to turn onto, okay, now we're two young adults at risk. So we got to be there for one another. And I think that has definitely brought us closer, even with the 1,200 mile distance. <laughs> <laughs> nice answers, nice answers. Um, um, yeah, it sounds like, uh, well, you're both very, very supportive of each other and of, of your father too, and which is, I think that's all you can hope for from, from family and from siblings for sure. Um, if... Um, I'm, if you, if one of you was going through the testing process or wanted to go through it, do you think you would uh, share that with, with your sister and share that with your dad before you started or, or would you wait until you, until you're kind of going through it? So this definitely has come up before. Yeah, this has uh-huh. actually been um, a big part of the hard times for being at risk. Um, I remember we went to convention one year and someone was telling their story and they said they did not tell their family about the testing process. Well, I heard Gia say she would probably do the same thing. So I'm sitting in the corner like, oh my God, I'm like, she's really going to do that. So I honestly, now that I'm older, I probably... Me, I don't know. I can't really hide stuff from her because we literally talk every day and we just have a really strong relation, like relationship. Like I can't mm. hide stuff from her, but I think I would hide it from my dad. I don't think I'd be able to hide it from Gia, mm-hmm. but just, I think maybe just recently, a few months ago, I asked her, I said, did you get tested? And she was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I was just thinking back on the time from convention when you said that you were going to get tested and not tell anyone. And I I asked her about four times, did you get tested? And don't lie to me. Yeah. Her and my dad have like this thing where they literally think I'm testing all the time and not telling them. Um, So that is fact. I did say I probably wouldn't tell anyone if I was going through it. 
Um, and I can't say much has changed. I would definitely tell my sister, but I think honestly, with that being my number one priority, I would, it would take me some time. I feel like the same way that you have to feel ready to test, I would have to feel ready to divulge that information to her because, uh, I mean, whether I'm negative or positive, like if it's a positive, the thing that always sits at the forefront of my head is, okay, this starts all over. Um, you know, if I'm positive, my sister's going to be my caregiver. My dad's going to be my caregiver once those symptoms happen. And, you know, I don't live with them. So I do think about being positive and is it, are they going to move to me? Am I going to move to them? How does that whole thing work out? So it's always at the forefront of my mind thinking like, I don't think I would tell either of them right away. I, it, it, it's tough because I would feel like I would want Jenna especially to know what that I'm going through the process but then at that point you kind of give up letting the keeping the results a secret <laughs> so it's yeah a, it's, tricky it's a balancing one. act I think because you have to you have to have support yourself right. if you're going through the process but you also have to be comfortable as you said that you're about about who you're telling and when you're telling people and you know it just has to be on your terms when you're going through that kind of thing I think but I think as long as you're you have the right level of support then that's good um whereas if you're just doing it completely by yourself um then that's not it's not going to go well I don't have anything else that's you you've taught me dry questions (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, well, thank you, girls. I appreciate that. It's been really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll end it there. 